Hello 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting here with the Creality Ender 3 version 3 plus. This is the big brother of the Ender 3 and the biggest of the entire Ender 3 version 3 line. We are going to unbox it and assemble it right now. When opening your box, please avoid the urge to grab a box cutter or something crazy and just tear through it. You never quite know what they have packed, where and how, beneath this cardboard. I'm going to use a simple push pin to avoid accidentally slicing and dicing harnesses or other fragile components of my fancy new 3D printer. Alright, it did turn out this box had enough tape to fix the Titanic. However, I got it done with my push pin. Let's open it up. With the box open, go ahead and remove this top layer of foam, your user manual, and have a look at the components nestled inside this initial piece of foam. We can see now there was nothing to damage with a razor blade, but I'm still happy we took that precaution. Go ahead and remove the components available to you at this time. When building a printer, I keep a separate table aside and I place the components on that table. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, which we are likely not going to use. This one, this bag of goodies. This box and this little pin. You will see the hot end peeking out right there. Do not touch it. No touching. Grab this piece of foam, pull it up, toss it aside. Inside here, you'll find a sample of filament. Hyper PLA is my favorite filament. Give this a try, you will like it. Inside here is the gigantic frame of the 3 Plus. We will go ahead and pull this out. Please avoid grabbing these rails or touching these belts. No touching! Handle the frame itself. There are more belts under here, so do not dig your fingers under there and grab. Gently reach and work this frame up. Place it on the table next to you. When handling this printer, please do not grab or squeeze these belts. Do not grab or squeeze these rods. There are a lot of them all the way around. You are going to have to handle this printer very carefully. No touching! No touching! No touching! No. More so than some other printers you may have previously owned. Next up is the printer base. Reach in here, pull off that piece of foam. Reach in here, pull off that piece of foam. And pull off that piece of foam. However, not this piece of foam in front of the print bed. It is glued to this piece of foam. So reach back here and grab this block of foam, work it out, and toss it aside. You will see the entire print bed and base are now free. Reach your hands down there, tuck your fingers under it, and work it out of the box and onto your work table. This box is now junk and you can toss it aside. To proceed, face your printer base forward. You'll see the tabs and the connection for the screen are facing forward. Grab your filament spool parts. There's two right here for the filament spool holder. To install it, simply place it into the hole and rotate till it slips in. Then rotate more, firmly hold, and squeeze it into place. Securing it to the printer is easier than ever. Simply place the holes over the screws and push it down. You will feel something more along the lines of a thump rather than an aggressive click. If you felt that thump, your filament spool holder is installed and ready to go. Our next order of business is to secure this to this. With your print base on a firm surface, make sure these little harnesses are all tucked nicely out of the way and you're not gonna be pinching anything. Simply pick this up and slide it into the slots on the print base. It looked like this. Your printer came with a bag of goodies. 
Go ahead and take out the tools and a bag of screws. Inside that bag is an assortment of stuff. I don't know why it's all mixed up like this. Take all the plastic pieces aside and be left with just these eight screws. Inside the baggie are some tools. Go ahead and find the one that fits the screw. We're gonna use that one. Two of them go right here. Install these same two screws on the other side. Then gently lean your printer back and install two more on the bottom of each side. Here and here. With all four screws in place, go ahead and stand your printer back up. You may have noticed there are still two more pieces of foam under the bed. I kept them there so the bed wouldn't slide around while we were working with it. You can slip your finger in front of that foam, gently work it out, and toss it aside. Do you remember these? Go ahead and break them out. Do take note, one of them has this little plastic clip. That will be on the lower side, facing the filament spool holder. Please note, they're labeled left and right. Mine is labeled incorrectly. This is for the left side of the printer. It's only the right side of the printer from my perspective if I'm looking at the printer, but it is the left side of the printer. However, no need to be confused, you will notice there is L and R stickers on the top of this machine and you can just match them up. We are going to install this here and here using the same two screws. If these holes do not line up, simply loosen this to make it taller, tighten it to make it shorter. When you're done, it will look like this. Repeat this process on the other side. When you're all done, you'll have two stabilizing braces on both sides of the V3 Plus. And now it's time to get our electrical connections going. Since we are already here, let's just scroll down and pop over to this stepper motor. Right behind the stepper motor is a little harness labeled Z. Go ahead and stick it in. It only fits one way. Just push it right in there, piece of cake. Pay very special attention here. We are going to connect the filament runout sensor, but we're not gonna do it with the filament runout sensor down here. I'm gonna place my finger under here and under here, and we are slowly going to work it up. Remember this clip right here? Go ahead and take this wire, match it to the sticker, and push it into the clip. The sticker literally says, get the of the black positioning label of the flexible flat cable stuck at the line claw. I have no idea what that means. With the cable in place right here, continue upward to the filament run out sensor and notice there is another clip right there. Can you see it? Take the wire and place it at the next sticker into that clip. You take this little wire and clip it into the filament runout sensor. We can then bring this down and I'll pass the hot end cable between the bar and the Bowden tube and into the hot end. Pull this wire down and feed a zip tie up the hull, down the hull, 
and lock it. It's super important that the lock is underneath and not above or else the clip won't fit. Next up is the clip. Look for the two small pegs, they go in the front. Place it at an angle, down, and push. It will snap flushly into place very gently and your cable is attached. Now take that Bowden tube, pass it between here, line it up with the coupler on the hot end, support the bottom of the hot end, and gently push down. You will only feel a gentle click. Do not test it by pulling up and down. This is a shark bite coupler with tiny little aluminum teeth. If you yank up and down on this, you will break those teeth, ruin this coupler, and the tube will not stay put anymore. While you are here, do look at this switch right here. If it is on lock, simply push it to unlock. We will need it in that position to load filament during the setup phase. Turn your printer around and look on the other side to the other stepper motor. Here you will see three connections, one white and two black. Take the two black cables and connect them together. Be gentle, they only fit one way. Then take the remaining white connector and plug it in to your stepper motor. While you are here, it's time to check the voltage of your printer. You will look right here inside this window to see if it matches the correct voltage. For me here in the US, it needs to be set to 115. Go ahead and peel the sticker off. Look inside here, there is a red tab. If it says 115, you're good. If it says 230, simply push this in here and push it to the side. Mine now reads 115. And the final component on this printer is the screen. It goes right here. The screen is in this package. Go ahead and pull it out. Remove this tape. Remove this protective plastic. The orientation of the screen is this bump up. That bump matches this bump. This tab is very short, be very gentle. Clip it in. Once it's clipped in, simply slide the tab up over the notches on the printer and press down. It's a soft, spongy feeling rather than a loud, clicky feeling. If you feel like you're not getting enough leverage on it, you can place your palm right here, hook your finger under the printer, and push down. And there it is, the Creality Ender 3 version 3 Plus. Go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. If you've done everything correctly, you should see the Creality logo and the Ender 3 version 3 will boot up without any bleeps, tweeps, or alarms. We will go ahead and walk through the setup and configuration in another video. You are on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your 3D printing instructor across the internet and building the Creality Ender 3 version 3 plus what's today's adventure. Hey.